Hey folks, every once in a while uh, I get a request uh, about how to do a tail cap boot replacement and it is super easy but I thought I'd just go ahead and shoot a quick video and show you how to do that. Um, so the first thing to note if your flashlight is assembled with the battery in it uh, you should be removing the battery from the head uh, and not the tail cap and the reason is and I know that's how you do it on a Surefire um, but removing the tail cap basically puts stress on the spring from it rotating um, and the AW batteries have some little bumps on the back that could potentially get hooked on the spring. Um, it's just less wear and tear on the light uh, to remove the battery from the head. So if I want to remove the tail cap and I don't want to remove the head all the way, I'll just back that off a little bit just to reduce the, the compression on the tail cap spring before I pull it off. I suppose the other thing is if you do want to change the battery through the tail cap, just loosen the head a little bit and that would sort of take care of things. So we're just going to unscrew this. Uh, my my toolless pocket clip, you just pull that off, it slides over the o-ring. Uh, and you'll notice in here there are two little notches. Um, so if you have one of the flashlight packages that comes with the tail cap tool uh, they're just bent nose pliers and you just put the tips of the pliers in those little slots and that's not totally necessary it just makes it a little easier uh, I usually just use my hands uh, when I when I build the lights I actually do use a tool with a torque wrench on it just to make sure everything is very consistent but again that's kind of overkill um, so to unscrew this I'm just gonna kind of grab it like this and actually push down as I turn it and Try to use my left hand so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, and the reason you push down is there's a little O-ring inside the component stack. And it just sort of acts like a lock washer. It's got a little bit of compression. So when you put the, the tail cap switch in, that O-ring compresses and basically keeps the threads tight against each other. Um, this ring, the retaining ring, is separate from the switch. Whoa, I just dropped that on the floor. Where'd it go? Oh, man. Oh, I got it. I'm back. Uh, so these parts are just slip fit together. Um, so you just slide the ring over the switch and then just sort of manually make sure uh, the, the two notches are lined up. Uh, inside here, there's a stack of a few components. Uh, basically, just pay attention to which order they come out. It's not a huge deal. Uh, basically, there are two fiber washers, and then the O-ring, and one more fiber washer. It's not really that important on which side you have two O-rings, but it is important that this top one be a fiber washer, because as the uh, switch turns against that, uh, if you tighten it against the O-ring, the switch is going to stick. If you tighten it against the fiber washer, it'll slip by and it'll be easy to turn. Uh, and so you just push the tail cap boot out like that, and to put it back in, just push that down to the bottom, two washers, one o-ring, one more washer, uh, and then you just screw the switch back in. And again, you can do this by hand if you would like. Um, and then so when it gets a little bit snug, again you have to push in and turn in order to get it seated. Now you don't need it incredibly crazy tight, you just need it hand tight, as we say in the industry, so I'm going to push in and turn until it's tight. Um, if you over tighten it, it is possible your switch will get too sensitive um, because you're pushing the switch closer to the boot and that's reducing the gap uh, in between the little nub on the inside of the button and the actual switch. So if it's, if it's, if you put it back together and it is more sensitive than it was, you can just back this off a little bit. Now, if you didn't get it tight enough, you might just get some sort of erratic switching behavior. Um, and that is the battery pushes on the spring and it's actually driving the switch away from the retaining ring. And the switch and the retaining ring need to be, uh, need to have electrical contact. So when you drive that switch away, it can break the contact. But if it is sufficiently tight, that will not happen. Uh, so then you just pop the clip back on reinstall it on the light make sure everything's tight, tighten the head back down 
and uh, you should be in business. Cool. Thanks for watching.